Here we go. Off to Brisbane. to you from Brisbane today. Um, I was in Sydney yesterday doing a full day gig. I've got a full day gig, uh, speaking gig tomorrow as well, up here with uh, the very talented team from Hancock Creative, who work with um, non-profits and social enterprises and causes. So um, it's a really great room. It's really great to speak to these people because they, you know, they don't get addressed very much in terms of a corporate speaking event. Um, and they're very, very thirsty for knowledge and, and, and they listen and they interact really well and they're just cool people. So I'm, I'm looking forward to tomorrow's gig as well. I want to start by just uh, just talking a little bit about um, going first and what it's like if you first give yourself permission, um, then you're really then giving other people permission to extend themselves the same courtesy. And what I mean by that is I talk a lot about, um, you know, stuff that I live with, um, stuff that's, you know, in my heart, um, you know, real, real shit. And, uh, and some of it requires some vulnerability and requires a little bit of a risk take. And, um, you know, I do that on a stage. I do that you know, on this stage or, or actually on a physical stage in front of an audience. And, you know, someone always, 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 always comes up at the end of every gig and, and says to me, wow, dude, you know, you just told my story or, um, you know, I'm, I'm so glad you said that about your anxiety. I'm feeling really anxious and I have been for a while. I haven't told anyone, you know, or um, talk about being a suicide survivor and then having people disclose to me either their suicidal ideation or the fact that they are also um, a survivor of suicide and, you know, more and more, I kind of realize that when someone has that conversation with me, it's literally the first time they've ever told another person. And, and I'm that person, you know? It's a great kind of, it's kind of awesome in a way, like, like literally awesome. Um, but, you know, I have to really hold a strong boundary there. I have to respect their space and, and, and that kind of thing. And, and sometimes that's, that's a bit hard. Um, and sometimes, I, you know, it can be a little bit trigger, triggering for me too. So I have to just be really kind of strong on that boundary. But what I, the point I, I want to make today is by me showing that vulnerability, by me um, kind of investigating my own curiosity in that, I am actually, what I'm actually doing is going first and giving somebody else permission to also feel those things and to also then express those things, those things to someone else and, and, and maybe that's for the first time. And if I'm able to do that, you know, I'm, I'm pretty convinced that you'd be able to do that too in, in your own life, you know, if, um, even if it's just within your own family, within your own relationship, um, within your own friendships, you know. Um, it, uh, some, sometimes people are just waiting, just waiting to be given that permission, just waiting for somebody else to go first, to talk about the stuff that's actually important to them. And then, you know, they can actually talk about what's important to them as well because you've, you've really gone first in that. And, I, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big responsibility, but it's part of, a, a big part of my job that I, that I really enjoy. I'm in Brisbane and I could be writing. I've got a bit of a deadline. Instead, I'm uh, taking myself to the movies. <laughs> Another thing I, I, 
I've kind of been concentrating on a bit more for myself as well lately has been um, some advice that one of my therapists gave me about concentrating on what I can do um, instead of focusing constantly on what I can't do or focusing on what I feel like someone has taken from me or someone has wronged me or someone owes me or the world owes me or, or whatever it might be and I just have to keep reorienting reorientating myself to come back to the things that I can do um, tomorrow it's my uh, it's my little baby boy's birthday tomorrow he's turning five um, and I won't get to see him um, tomorrow I'm up here and you know and uh, so you know if I focus on the fact that I can't see him tomorrow then I get you know really sad and, and a bit angry um, but none of that serves me or him you know um, whereas if I focus on what I can do you know, I can ring him as soon as he wakes up in the morning. I can um, get him a present, something little that he'll remember, you know, that, that he ties, that this is what Dad gave him for his birthday. Um, you know, I can ha have him in my heart and have him in my thoughts and, you know, I can do something kind for somebody else tomorrow um, and that might come back to me by way of karma or something like that, you know. And these are the things I can do, you know, I can send him a voicemail, I can send him a video, um, I can do these things and if I just focus all the time on what I can't do, it just consumes me with negativity and, and uh, you know, darkness. Um, so I just have to keep bringing myself back to what I can do, the things that I can change, the things that I can affect, um, you know, the people I can help, the kindness I can show, um, rather than focusing all of my energy on the negativity or the subtraction from my life, um, as opposed to the addition. So, you know, maybe that's something that, that resonates with you too, I don't know, but um, I know it helps me when I when I get really, really down. It's usually because I'm concentrating and focusing on stuff that I'm missing, stuff that uh, stuff that I want, stuff that I don't have, some stuff that you know somebody hasn't let me have, or whatever it might be. Instead of focusing on all the good things I do have and all the good things I can do.